So hi, everyone. Uh, we are going to start. It's just a little bit past one. Um, uh, we picked a really wrong title for this uh, session, so uh, don't be too afraid about that. Uh, we are going to basically talk about um, the way forward for entity storage in, in Drupal 8. Uh, that's basically what this talk is about. So I'm Damien Tourneau. I'm the CTO of Commerce Guys. Um, and I'm going to leave uh, the floor to Lucas Smith uh, for the first part. We are going to leave, um, we, are we are going to try to do that in half an hour, so a quarter of an hour each, and try to have the floor open for questions for half an hour more. Uh, we do have a strategy coming forward there, but I'm going to leave uh, to let Lucas talk about uh, the stuff he has been working on uh, since the past couple of years. Ah, I could have stopped. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So you should be here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to talk to be, you guys about something called PHPCR, which is a specification for content management system storage APIs. And um, yeah, just bear with me. We're, I'm going to explain a little bit how it, how it works, what you can do with it. And then Damian is going to talk about how all of that can start to trickle into Drupal potentially, okay? Um, normally, uh, for this talk, I, it takes me about one hour to do it, so I'm going to do it in 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to skip a couple slides. Uh, we didn't throw them out because we do want to give people the opportunity to maybe stop me if they think that something should be elaborated on and also to, just to make people aware that these slides exist. So if they want to go back, uh, they can check them out. Actually, now if you have your laptop open, you can go to phpcr.github.com and there is a link to the, most of the slides that you see on this talk except for the stuff that Damian is going to talk about. So with further, without further ado, let's start. So if you're designing a content management system, you have very specific needs for your data storage. And one of the specific needs is the fact that your data is going to be unstructured. And so it will not be a natural fit for a relational database. And obviously, today there are not a lot of so-called NoSQL solutions, which are sort of a perfect fit for that. And with Drupal 7, we already have a little bit of that with you know, the option of uh, at least putting some of your data into MongoDB, for example. So you know, that could be an obvious choice. The problem, however, is that most of these NoSQL solutions are not really meant to then also have uh, maintain a tree structure, or let alone a graph of these different pieces of content. And there's sort of like a sub-community within the NoSQL world called graph databases, which then try to address this. However, for the most part, they're optimized more for like mapping like a social graph or something like that, not really for managing um, larger pieces of data. Now, the, un the other thing that you want with a content management system, you want to be able to version your data. Um, you also want to be able to uh, you know, really closely manage the permissions on your data and things like that. And in the end, you want to have a system that is still workable for a normal human being uh, without being confused. And that's actually one of the historic sort of issues with many of the content management systems, especially in the PHP world, is that their APIs for storage are more like accidents that, you know, you, you know, you, you fix and then you keep going and you fix and you keep going. There was never really, really the moment where people said, this is the domain uh, that we're trying to solve and this is the API we're going to use to solve that problem domain, but more like, okay, we have this and then we add that. Okay, no, we have to refactor this. And that wa that's why these APIs become very complex and, you know, Again, I'm not a Drupal expert, but what I hear about, you know, having an entity API and a field API and, you know, all of that sounds a little very accidental rather than really designed uh, and, you know, with a clear concept in mind. Now, this is what, what PHPCR tries to solve. And I highlighted something here. It's, it's a standardized API. So PHPCR is not an implementation of a storage API. It's just the definition of the a API. And that is very, very significant. Because one of the bi biggest problems that you could try to solve with a storage API is being the perfect solution for everybody. It's not possible. It's simply not possible. What you can do is you can define an API that addresses a specific problem domain 
and then let people have different implementations of that API that are optimized for different use cases. So for some use cases, it might make sense to have a separate table for each node type. Um, but if you do that, certain questions will become really hard to implement. Other questions will become very easy to implement. Now, uh, if you're trying to do a general purpose solution, um, you can only go one way or the other. Or you go in the direction of an API, which allows you to then have different implementations that are optimized. But the higher level code that is using that API remains the same. So just quickly, PHPCR is actually based on the Java repository specification, which has been around for over a decade now. Um, the Java guys um, are actually really, really happy with what we're doing. Uh, so we actually met up with the lead of the JCR specification, and it's been decided that the next version of JCR will actually include PHPCR. Um, which I think is unprecedented, like um, Java specification containing PHP, CR, uh, PHP interfaces. Um, as a European, uh, I don't have to worry that much about IP stuff or software patents, but indirectly um, becoming part of the JCR specification also means that we will be part of the same legal umbrella, which means that for people in the US that unfortunately do have to worry about that, that they're also covered in that regard. Um, one of the key things, if you have uh, a specification like this, is you want to have multiple implementations. And we already have multiple implementations being worked on. One is Jackalope, which is implemented purely in PHP. The other one is called Midgard, which is implemented in C. Uh, with Jackalope, we have an additional concept for transports, uh, which actually, we, so we have multiple transports being worked on. The reference implementation is the one using Java Jackrabbit. And the great thing, because Java Jackrabbit already has all the features implemented of JCR, it you know, really made it very easy to get all these features really quickly uh, to be able to play around with them and scale up to, um, let's say, uh, like a setup with 100 gigabytes of data um, and uh, you know, work with that sort of data set. Um, but we do need to have a pure PHP implementation that's just you know, PHP and some relational database. And that's what the Doctrine DBL transport layer is for. And in theory, there could be, uh, once we have that working, it should be very easily uh, possible to do one based on DBT and G as well. Now, um, here's just a high level overview of the features. Um, so with PHPCR, you get tree traversal. So you can you know, look up a path, you can get its parents, you can get its children. Um, you can also uh, optionally get a UUID for any node and then directly um, uh, find nodes based on the UUID, and you can reference other nodes based on the UUID. Um, there's also a full text search API. Um, there's versioning in there. There's a, the, some of the features that may be optional. So there's a capability discovery API, which lets you figure out uh, what is actually supported, like is versioning supported in this implementation or not. Um, there's XML import and export, and as a matter of fact, PHPCR essentially specifies an XML database. So you can take any XML document and drop it into PHPCR without having to do any changes to the data itself. Um, there's also support for locking and transactions, and also for permission control. Um, and finally, also observation, which is sort of like triggers uh, are for a relational database. Um, I think I have to go faster. <laughs> um, uh, so really, the, so you have a document storage API that is perfectly fit for tree structures, uh, actually uh, graphs. Um, nodes basically are identified by the name and their parent path. Um, and I have a little example here. So if you have a node um, stored under my path, underwater fish, then actually that path is constructed from the parent path and uh, the node name fish. And so what is important here to understand is that every node must have a parent, and every node must have a, a name. Um, however, you can actually have multiple nodes under the same path, uh, which again is something that is necessary for XML compatibility, but in practice I usually disable that because it's not something that you want to use. Um, on a node, you can have any number of properties. Um, here I have a couple examples of uh, different types that are supported. Um, so string, boolean, long, double, date, and all of that. References and weak references are, are very important concepts. Um, 
The difference between the two is that with reference, you're basically maintaining referential integrity, so you cannot remove a node that is being referenced. Uh, but if you have a weak reference, that can actually point into nothing, um, so that you can pick and choose what you want to use. What's great, though, is that in PHPCR, the referring nodes has a list of referrers, so you can always you know, go, it's sort of bi-directional. Um, there's another concept called uh, primary node types. Every node must have a primary node type. And with the node type, it's sort of as a, like a schema uh, definition, so you can mandate specific properties, you can mandate the node types of children and things like that. Um, and the important bit here is that you must ha choose a node and you cannot ch uh, change a, the primary node type uh, after you created the node. However, there's another concept called mix-ins, and with these, you can, uh, you can add and remove these later on. So one example of this is uh, referenceable. Um, I think I have that on the next slide. So once you make a node referenceable, it automatically gets a UUID. Um, and, uh, but you can also remove that mix-in later on if you decide that it shouldn't be referenceable anymore and then the UUID is removed. In the same way, uh, um, you can work with versioning. You can just make a node versionable uh, after it's been created and you can make it remove that uh, later on as well. And you can add your own uh, mix-in types and primary node types and you can extend from existing ones or from your own defined ones. Um, there's another concept called workspaces. I'm going to jump over that because it's not so critical. Here's a, like a very bird's eye uh, overview um, how you work with PHPCR. So basically you have a repository. Um, you log into that repository which gives you a session and then on that session you can um, get node instances and then uh, get the properties of these nodes um, and then interact with them. Uh, via the workspace, you can get uh, some other uh, objects as well for the full text search uh, capabilities and versioning. I have a bunch of code examples. I'm going to gloss over them, uh, but they exist. One, the key thing I want to say here, though, is that you see these first seven lines. This is all that is specific for one implementation. All the code examples after that are generic, so they, they should work with any implementation of the standard. So here, just you know, CRUD operations, tree traversal, uh, versioning, uh, restoring previous versions, um, searching. Um, there are different APIs for that. So there's one that's sort of SQL-ish. Uh, there's one that is object-oriented, and uh, we have a fluent interface on the object-oriented model as well. Um, the other important thing is that if you have a standard, you need to ensure that people are actually compliant to that. So this is the test suit running against Jackrabbit. This is the test run suit running against the uh, Doctrine database uh, abstraction layer implementations. As you can see, uh, that, that one doesn't have all the features yet. Uh, but um, the Midgard one implementation also works against the same test suit to really ensure compliance. Um, and I think that's absolutely critical to have. There's also, um, similar to what you can have with an ORM, we have a simple solution to, make, to basically allow you to map objects to PHPCR nodes, um, so you, uh, but I'm not going to go into details on that, um, but that's a pretty, pretty nice solution that um, I'm using my daily work quite extensively. So the conclusion um, is that really PHPCR tries to address the problem domain of a content management system. Um, it doesn't try to be a general purpose database. So if you, as an example, if you're creating a web store, you may not want to put your orders and inventory into PHPCR because you might be doing aggregate queries on that, like you're going to ask questions like, how many t-shirts uh, has this person ordered in the last month? And these are the type of queries you can effectively answer with a relational database, um, but not so much with PHPCR. Uh, however, when you're talking about um, you know, organizing your products uh, into categories and things like that, that's a perfect fit for PHPCR. And so, uh, again, the key point here is that uh, PHPCR really is focused on the CMS problem domain, um, and you can mix and match different database solutions. Uh, also, key value stores for some situations might make more sense than PHPCR. And, um, yeah, really just use the tool that is ideal for whatever use case you're trying to solve. And I think that's, yeah, some more information, more information. Contributors, so we have quite a number of people working on this, um, although I should admit that one-third of these people are actually co-workers of mine. 
a um, bunch of companies involved, a bunch of projects looking into that. Midgard and Symphony 2 have adopted PHPCR. Typo 3 have something that diverged a couple years ago, but they might come back. Uh, Nuku is a um, re-implementation of the Joomla core, and they're also looking at PHPCR in the future. Uh, Easy Publish are looking into it, and I hope Drupal as well. Um, more links, more links, and so, sorry, I was a little too fast. <laughs> So maybe we should uh, just open the floor for questions right after this part, uh, because you might have some, or maybe you are dead already. Uh, any questions for that part? So I'm going to, I'm going to go into uh, trying to uh, figure out what does this mean for Drupal. Um, this is all, uh, this basically all started in London. Uh, in London, I gave a core conversation about document-oriented storage. Uh, it was a first approach of uh, what needs to happen to uh, actually refactor the way we store entities in Drupal because from experience, um, we have, um, right now we have an architecture that we have not really planned for in terms of storage. Um, the architecture itself really looks like that. So the color scheme is from messy to less messy. Um, so we have, uh, as you know, we have this concept of entity controller uh, that uh, in Drupal 7 only uh, handle loading entities. In Drupal 8, uh, ho hopefully it uh, supports uh, the whole CRUD operations. Um, and this entity controller is uh, basically uh, going to store some of the properties of an entity, but not all of them. It's going basically to store, uh, is responsible for only the part of the entity that is stored in the base table of the entity. So it's responsible for, that's the uh, system that is responsible for uh, maintaining that, that data in the node table, uh, incidentally also in the node revision table, in the user table, etc. On the other side, we have the field API, and the field API is responsible for storing and managing everything that is a field. Um, so it relies, uh, it, is, it has been nicely designed in the sense that the, the way we store the fields is actually pluggable. So you have this notion of field storage that is per field, um, and that is responsible for storing the field. The problem is that it's not, those, not, those are not two independent things. There is one system in the middle, which is entity field query, which is our querying language for entities, that actually needs to know about both. And depending on the use case and depending on the, of the entity field query you, try, you are trying to execute, either entity field query is going to execute the query directly through the, the SQL database, or it's going to delegate the query to the field storage. And the field storage needs to know both, because it needs to be able to, uh, to uh, execute a query that applies both on properties of the base table and on field. Um, and the problem is that it's not designed to do that. So what, what's happening is that uh, when we have uh, the implementations of the field storage we have in Contrib, especially the MongoDB implementation, are basically both a field storage and an entity storage at the same time. We don't, uh, in the MongoDB implementation, we don't store only fields, we store the whole entity object so that we can actually um, um, execute entity field query on both properties of the base table and on fields. So that's the current state of the game. Um, so the, um, during my talk in London, I was um, convinced that we would have to re-implement a field storage by ourselves. Um, now that we uh, looked a little bit into PHPCR, I'm way less convinced than that, and I think that PHPCR could long-term satisfy most of, the, most of our needs in terms of entity storage. Probably not all of our needs, but we can work with the PHPCR community to uh, have that implemented. Um, so PHPCR is a potential long-term solution for our entity storage uh, mechanism. The problem is we don't have that much time. The, um, the code freeze for Drupal 8 is uh, something like eight months away. Uh, it's basically the end of the year. 
Um, so we don't have a lot of time, and especially we don't have the time to work both on the PHP CR side and on the Drupal side at the same time to make sure that they satisfy our needs. So what I suggest is that we go uh, into a, a strategy with a, a, a set of steps. And the first step is actually to clean up what we have right now. So the, uh, the architecture I suggest is that we uh, remove that uh, dual storage and unify the storage into a single entity storage. Um, so I suggest that we remove the field, AP, the field storage part and move both properties and field storage into a single unified interface. Interface that is pluggable so that you can replace it with other implementation. Um, but the idea of this first step is absolutely not to touch the data model. We are not going to touch anything about how stuff is stored. Uh, using the SQL implementation, data is still going to be stored in a base table and in a one table per field um, for, for all the fields, the fields data. The only thing that I suggest is that we unify that into um, um, a narrow focus storage interface that is specific to storing what looks like a Drupal entity, meaning something that has, some of them are property of a base table and some of them are um, fields. So I'm not suggesting we implement, um, I'm not suggesting at this point we implement a generic document-oriented storage, not at this step. I'm just suggesting we uh, clean the mess we uh, have from Drupal 7 and unify all that uh, using a consistent interface. The problem is that to do that, we have to do a couple of things first. And there are a couple of prerequisites for this step. Especially um, the way we currently, uh, the, the way the taxonomy term entity is, is currently implemented is so very messy, it hurts. Um, and there are two things we really need to fix before being able to uh, uh, unify the storage. First thing is that the term hierarchy actually needs to be a field. It, in Drupal 7, we learned that everything that doesn't store data, uh, that something that want to extend an entity and doesn't store data in a field is wrong. We learned that, right? So every module that was, uh, in Drupal 6, every module was trying to implement its own storage separately. The idea is that the field is a primary way of storing something that extends an entity in Drupal 7. Uh, except that core doesn't do that. Core stores the, the hierarchy between terms in a separate table that is not a field. So we need to, be, to make that a field, which has some interesting consequences. Um, the second thing is that uh, in the, for taxonomy terms, we currently store the VID of the vocabulary, not the actual uh, machine name of the vocabulary, which means that the storage for core is actually completely um, inconsistent. Uh, the, the storage for the taxonomy term is completely in, inconsistent, and it means that you cannot actually do an entity field query on a taxonomy term filtered by, bun by the bundle of the taxonomy term. That's not supported. That just doesn't work, because taxonomy terms are not stored properly. They should store their bundle name directly into the base table of the entity, and instead of that, they store the, the ID of the vocabulary. So we need to fix, the, to, to, to fix the, that couple of things before being able to implement step one. So step one is really the only thing that I want for Drupal 8. The rest is, if we have time, let's try to do something like that. So the, the possible step two is to adopt PHPCR. And when you look at it, the, 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 the architecture is really, really similar to this one. Basically, the, the, the box are the same. The idea is to just um, move the responsibility for a box elsewhere. So uh, in step one, we had this box that is the entity storage interface. Basically, that's, uh, that maps to a PHP, PHP CR session or workspace. Um, we have this box that is our entity field query, uh, query language. That actually maps well, really well to PHP CR types of queries uh, or to the fluent interface provided by the query builder. These things that we have, that is a document store in SQL, that maps really well to uh, PHPCR implementations or Jackalop transports. Uh, and Jackalop is, um, has a, a SQL-based implementation that we could use that is going to store the data differently than our current implementation, but that should be all right, but that should be all right for uh, most of the small uh, 
use cases. But to be able to do that, uh, there are a couple of prerequisites, which uh, some of them might make it impossible for Drupal 8. Uh, on the Drupal site, uh, we are going to need to come up with a, a mapping between our concepts, entities, and fields into, PHPCR, uh, into a PHPCR schema, so into a PHPCR notion of node versus uh, properties. Um, also, the PHPCR SQL implementation, the, the Jackalup SQL implementation, is currently built on top of Doctrine DBIR. Uh, so, in, so either we adopt Doctrine DBIR as a replacement for DBTNG, which is a large endeavor, um, or we re-implement the, the SQL implementation of Jackalup on top of DBTNG, which should actually be uh, easier to do. Um, so that's for the Drupal side. Uh, but there are also uh, little, uh, some stuff that we might want to consider helping on the PHPCR Jackalup side. Um, first thing is that the Jackalup SQL implementation is not very scalable. It's even less scalable in most use cases than our current SQL implementation, which is um, a, ch a challenge. Um, so we uh, might, uh, so we probably need to work on uh, improving the scalability of this implementation. My ballpark figure is that for something that uh, is m less than uh, 10,000 or a, a couple tens of thousand nodes uh, or entities in a website, uh, the, the SQL implementation should have the same scalability um, uh, aspects than uh, the current SQL storage we have. So that's my benchmark. My benchmark is to do not worse than what we have in core right now for sites that, has, that have less than tens, tens of thousands of nodes. Um, there is on also the, one of the things that we uh, might consider is uh, implement, having an implementation of uh, PHPCR that stores, uh, that stores a node per uh, the different nodes per, the, per type on different tables, uh, meaning that we could have a user table, a node table, etc. Right now, the implementation stores every object you put at it in a single table, which is going to freak people out. It's not necessarily bad in terms of performance, but it's definitely going to freak people out. Um, uh, and generally, we, uh, as everything we adopt from uh, Elsewhere, uh, we should really consider co heavily contributing uh, to the, those external projects. Um, actually, um, that applies for, for that would apply for this, but that also apply to all the components we have uh, uh, including for, included from Symfony. The Drupal core contributors really needs to become Symfony core contributors because uh, if we don't do that, that's never going to work. There are a couple of other steps we can, we can take, and one of them I would like to, to emphasize is search. Um, one of the nice things about PHPCR is that uh, you get full text search across all the fields of your entity uh, by default. The problem is that uh, this is uh, uh, specified in the PHPCR specification, but it's not currently implemented in SQL. And the nice thing is that we have a super nice SQL-based full text search implementation that's called the search module. We could take this implementation and uh, contribute that back as uh, a full text search implementation for Jackalup, which is the, the PHPCR uh, reference implementation. So that's definitely something we, we could do, and we could remove most of the code from the search module and stop contributing uh, and stop maintaining it just by ourselves and having a larger community of people maintaining it. There are a couple of other, uh, other fun stuff we could do uh, if we have time. Uh, but the, in a nutshell, the, the, the thing I want to emphasize here is that uh, there is absolutely no way we manage to adopt PH, the full PHPCR and migrate everything to PHPCR in Drupal 8. I'm not even dreaming of that. Uh, but if we can uh, come up all together and clean the API so that that type of stuff is possible for Drupal 8 in Contrib, I think that already uh, would be amazing. So that's about what I wanted to say. Uh, we have a couple of resources for Jackalup, uh, the uh, two RSC channels, the, P the GitHub project for PHPCR, and the reference to the specifications. 
so that's uh, the only thing I wanted to know. Uh, I wanted to say at this point, uh, we are going, um, I would like uh, a um, bunch of us on Friday to come up together and start working on the first step. I think that if we have the right people in the room, the first step could actually be implemented by Friday night. Uh, and that would be amazing, so that we can move on with our lives and uh, start building the rest. Um, so uh, if you are willing to join me on Friday to uh, sprint on, on that part and get uh, a set of patches together, uh, that would be amazing. And uh, it's now uh, 1.30 and we open the floor for questions. Hi. Um, so it sounds like having this kind of implementation in place would make it trivial in order to export content from one website and import it into another website, even if that website wasn't necessarily a Drupal site but was supporting JCR. Is that kind of something you have on your radar? Um, that's not true. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's not true. Um, uh, uh, GCR and PHPCR is a, um, a storage specification. So it specifies um, an API to access a storage layer. So it's basically the same as saying, it would be basically the same as saying, because those two systems are implemented on top of a MySQL database, it's trivial to exchange data between the two. That's not true. Uh, the way you store data is not, not, doesn't really have an impact on the way you exchange data. But there are specifications that could be used for that, and one of them is CMIS. Um, is what? CMIS. Ah. And that's the specifications for external exchange between systems. The fact that two systems are built on top of GCR or PHPCR doesn't mean that they are going to be able to exchange information. Right, but when, once, once the interface is in place, then you, could, it would be, you only would have to write that part. The, yes. You would have to build an interface for CMIS. Yes. So that's more in the focus of CMIS. That was in, uh, we were planning initially on talking about CMIS, but finally we decided that we, it's too boring. <laughs> ah, I don't know, it's kind of interesting to me. Um, this looks very good. Uh, one of the key questions I'd have though, one of the limitations with <coughs> uh, Drupal sites that use Mongo as their backend right now is there's a lot of cross-entity queries that become very complicated to do. The you know, canonical example is you know, artist and album and uh, track uh, for like music CDs and you want to pull data from all three entity types. And you can do that fairly easily by just hitting SQL directly in views and if you have a Mongo backend, you can't actually do that kind of query. How does JCR handle that kind of problem space where you have these complex multi-entity queries? So I think that what you are describing is a no notion of joins. Yeah, joins or in views its relationships. And uh, PHPCR as joins. Okay, how does it emulate that then for a NoSQL database? That's the problem with the NoSQL no database. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, so it doesn't fully abstract that then? Well, it does, but it's the, you don't have to concern yourself with it because you're using the API. So how, do, how they implement that is then the job of whoever implements you know, that specific implementation. Um, and yeah, it's possible to do it, and there might be you know, some work to do, and it, again, it might mean that some PHPCR implementations are better at answering specific questions than others, but the key thing is that you can choose which one is the right one for your use case, and that is something that is currently not possible. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm curious about the workspaces and I think one of your slides compared workspaces to Git or SVN branches. And uh, the way I've been thinking about how content editors have to deal with content currently in Drupal is similar to Dreamweaver check-in, check-out, which I had used for managing code years and years ago. Uh, because when you edit a node, you go in and edit. If someone else goes and edit those two forms both can't submit. Uh, is there an implementation currently that, that uses that Git or SVN concept that you mentioned uh, to make that part of content editing easier? Okay, so workspaces are, the idea with workspace basically gives you a separate like 
data tree that mm -hmm. you can use, and you can merge data from one uh, workspace to another. Mm -hmm. And so you could have one for like draft and one for, for production, staging, development, and sort of, so you can move data between these things. It's, um, in a way, so yeah, it is similar to Git uh, or, or Subversion in that sense, but really just, you know, being able to merge data from one workspace to another. Um, there's another, like the versioning concept, there's two, actually two different types of versioning there. There's a, a simple versioning, which is just a linear version history. And there's full versioning, which actually allows you to have branches uh, and tag uh, versions. But I wouldn't really use that for modeling um, like a, a draft workflow. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably not the right, right tool to use for that because only the latest version um, or the top version would be indexed as part for this full text search API. And so, it, you know, it would kind of be weird, like in the, in your, when you're looking at the draft data, um, you couldn't, uh, uh, it would sort of, yeah, it wouldn't really play well with the full text search. But if you have separate workspaces, then for these they have separate full text search indexes and it would work just fine. Okay, and, and what about um, branching for multiple editors? say a, a newspaper site that is uh, preparing for two possible outcomes of an election, would it be appropriate to use one workspace for one potential outcome and another workspace for another potential outcome? Um, that would probably not be practical. Um, so in theory, it's up to the um, implementation how it implements the workspaces. However, um, it's very hard, like, most implementations of JCR, and I think that's also going to be our reality, will actually do, when you create a workspace, you can clone an existing workspace, but it actually will copy the entire data. In theory, you could have copy on write, but so it wouldn't really be practical because, you know, if you have like 10 gigabytes of data and, you know, you clone that just to handle one election switch, that wouldn't work well. But for that use case, yeah, it might make sense to then have, you know, a draft workspace and then to use full versioning to have two different uh, branches. And then uh, one that when the election is done, you basically say, okay, now I'm going to put this version at the top and you know, say this is actually the, the current active version then. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I guess that, uh, I guess that, um, a way to rephrase that is that uh, as far as the API is concerned, workspace is the right object to do that, but it's not magic. Uh, so right now it doesn't, uh, most of the implementation of that are not going to be really practical for any of those, those use cases. And I even believe that the specification doesn't even uh, describe merging that data between it does, workspace. It does? It does? Okay, I'm, I'm mistaken then. Uh, okay, next. Okay, um, first of all, I'd like to mention uh, I really like the proposal. It sounds like a really good plan, in particular for, for aiming at uh, to enable it for Drupal 8 Contrib, which really sounds reasonable. Uh, in regards to uh, storage, I think unifying entity behind field storage is really something that, that needs to happen. And it has uh, some consequences for, like we won't have any mixed entity storage more, so we basically I have to live with the assumption that we have a single storage backend per entity type, mm -hmm. and I really think this is a sane assumption to make, and we really should go that way. And it also partly plays into um, uh, some discussions we recently had in the entity API boss, um, where we were thinking about um, unifying fields and properties uh, on the entity API level, such that the entity API only has a notion of properties, which then the, the field API um, basically builds up more mm -hmm. to implement the fields. Um, so how do you think about the, the relation between properties, fields, and all that in, in regard to storage? So just to, to, just to reply to the first question, uh, um, yes, the assumption that we are making uh, here is that the storage is going to be per entity type, not per field anymore. Uh, that said, I, have, I don't know if there is really a use case of having a storage per field. So I think it's not a practical, a really a practical, uh, that, that doesn't have any practical consequence. On the other hand, having the ability to completely uh, store entities in a different storage, including a remote storage, has a lot of practical implications, and that's really desirable. Uh, so yeah, that's a, the that's a compromise we uh, are going to need to make. Uh, for the second question, 
Um, I don't believe, I believe there is a lot of things to do in terms of, of data model. And yes, unifying everything, that s removing the, con the difference of, context, uh, of concept between properties of the base table and fields is desirable long term. No doubt about that. And I don't, but I don't believe that this cleanup is related to any of that. Uh, in a way, we can do that. Uh, those are two different, two uh, independent discussions to have. But yes, I think it would be desirable to have only one concept that is a field. I mean, that is what we currently call the field, meaning it has a way to store it, it has a format, it has formatters, it has widgets to edit it, etc. And if we have that uh, under a single API, it would make the lives of uh, everyone way easier. There are a couple of things to consider around um, uh, data consistency and the ability to have unique keys on fields and stuff like that. That is currently not possible, uh, but that we would need to, to, uh, to talk about during that migration, but I think uh, overall it's desirable. There are other stuff that could be desirable. We could remove completely the notion of fields, for example. We could make everything entities in a way and have a way to say that this entity is actually, uh, has actually a parent to this other entity, which means that the nesting as we do for fields right now could be done by nesting entities. That's also something we could consider. There are many fun stuff that we could do. The idea is that there are stuff that are realistic to do before Drupal 8 is released and there are stuff that are going, we are going to dream about for generations. Uh, so I would like to have something really uh, real in core about, uh, about all that so that we can build fancy stuff in Contrib later on. Uh, just had a question uh, regarding uh, the database backends. Uh, and have you guys considered uh, having multiple simultaneous backends, so an SQL one and a MongoDB one, and having a denormalizer sit maybe at the entity controller level and uh, so that you can have really, really fast uh, queries and also have all the complexity of the joins that you need. And uh, so just wanted to just so speak that, to a little bit to that. So that's exactly the vision. The way I see it, uh, you are going to pick a storage per entity type. Okay. Um, and uh, the storage can be as specific to your use case as you want. So you could have very specific storage that, that is denormalizing the data in a, in a specific way that is adapted to your use case. The idea is that there is no generic way of storing the data that is going to work for every type of query. So we should not talk about, we should not care about that at all. The idea is that we are unifying the storage into a consistent API so that you can do whatever type of storage is uh, the correct one for your use case. Okay, thank you. Maybe I can uh, quickly elaborate that. So really the vision is that right now we have uh, the Jackalope, which has three implementations or three different storage systems uh, integrated. So Jackrabbit, uh, which is you know, a Java uh, implementation of JCR, which you know, based you know, with clustering and all that is really fancy and really, I mean, it scales awesomely to 100 gigabytes of data. Um, we have the database abstraction layer one uh, to store into a relational database. And there's you know, very early work for a MongoDB one. There can be one for CouchDB, there can be a hybrid one that uses MongoDB for some stuff, relational for others. Um, and then there's the Midgard one, which is implemented in C and also uses a SQL database. Now, the, the great, really, the thing is that we want to see, I, I want to see a bazillion implementations for, for every specific use case. And when you have, you know, you look at performance issues in your installation or you're looking at the setup, you look at the, the, the things that you can offer, like obviously a shared host user will not be able to use Jackrabbit, obviously. So they have some constraints and features that they have available and they have some requirements in terms of performance. And you will find, you will look for the one that most closely matches that. And if you then still need to do more work, these are open source implementations, so you can still fork them and change them, but all the modules on top keep working, right? And that's, and right now, like a lot of uh, modules, they're doing optimizations by running uh, SQL queries, right? And that's what they do. And that basically kills the entire idea of being, allowing people to do optimizations on the lower level. Like, you cannot just, you know, like, when you start, like, changing your data model around to, to fix data, then, you know, modules break. And, and, and so you don't do that, or you rewrite the modules. And when we have this clean separations, all of this is now possible. You have uh, like a huge new dimension of optimization potential. 
On the topic of unifying properties and fields, does that mean changing sticky and front page to fields that could perhaps be disabled yeah. for a given content type? Yeah. Great. There is uh, no, there, that, right now in our data model, in, in the conceptual data model of Drupal, there is absolutely no point in those properties we store in the base table. I Conceptually, agree. there is absolutely no point. Sure. So if we can unify that, we should. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be slightly hard. And perhaps uh, a little fuzzier, what about URL aliases and menu links? Uh, with the concept of revisions, there, there could be a case where you have a published version of a node and a version that you want to be published at some time in the future, which could result in the URL alias changing. Right now, there isn't a clean way to do that because the relationship is between the URL alias and the node and not the revision. So should things like URL aliases, uh, menu links have uh, a storage that relates to the revision, basically a field-based storage, in addition to the storage in the actual URL alias or path alias table um, that does the work of aliasing separate from the storage of the data. So there are two different questions, I think. The first one is, uh, where should those things be stored mm -hmm. in the first place? Um, and currently, they are stored in the database, and they don't map really well to, uh, to either the configuration storage or the entity storage. So mm -hmm. that those are part of the fuzzy thing. We don't really know where to put. Uh, there is actually an issue about um, moving uh, menu links to entities, which would make a lot of sense. And the other question is about uh, where, how we can relate those to something else. Uh, and yeah, in many ways, the storing the URL alias of a node inside the node, so as a mm -hmm. field, would make a ton of sense. The problem is that how do you query across that? And how do you make sure that there is only one unique URL yes ever? So there are, there are questions regar re regarding all of that. The easiest way would probably be to make references uh, in that case, because nesting everything uh, under a single document is kind of gross, mm -hmm. too. So at one point, you really want uh, different documents if the things you are manipulating is uh, different in nature. Uh, so I don't have a precise answer for any of those. Uh, okay. That really needs to be to be studied, but those are really, really good questions. Okay. Thank Especially you. uh, URL alias, aliases, because as you point out, those are depend on, dependent on the content, which means that it makes absolutely no sense to store that as configuration. Um, so uh, I didn't explain that before, but I'm actually also the competition. Um, so I'm the lead of the Symphony 2 CMF initiative. Uh, and we're trying to blow away Drupal now. But um, so th we're, we're also using PHPCR there. And uh, one of the concepts that we're working on is that we will, we, the idea is that one, you have your content and you organize the content in a tree structure that makes sense for the content. And then second, you have, um, any number of reference structures that reference that content that can be representations for your different websites. So uh, for different languages, for different output formats, um, you just reference the, the content nodes, but you can have, you totally separate that. Um, and so, and this, this is like very minimal amount of data because really you're just building a tree of references to the actual content. So it's very easy, you know, to move that around um, and, uh, and, and, and maintain that, that sort of thing and also prepare different versions uh, of, that, of those trees um, to be used at, at will. But really the idea is there then you can have like on your French website, you may not have all the content translated yet. Um, so you may you know, change the, the tree structure a little bit here and there, but um, you know, it's possible. And same thing for your mobile website, you might have a flatter structure, uh, leave out some pieces um, and that's all possible. So that's, what, that's how we are using PHPCR. Um, I don't know how that maps to what Drupal is doing today, uh, but it, that could be a model um, that you could use in the future. Okay, thank you. So one thing I was unclear on with PHPCR, <clears throat> in, uh, I, I mean, you were saying that um, we lose per field storage. I'm not entirely sure I agree that that's a worthwhile trade-off, but that's for another time. Um, does it still support per type storage, like right now, you can put users in SQL and nodes in MongoDB. Is that something that you would be able to do? With so that's uh, independent of PHPCR. It's really a question of the 
Drupal plan to okay. adopt that. And it's basically uh, the question you ask is on this thing. Uh, so on this thing, my vision is that uh, storage should be per entity type. Mm -hmm. So you have a possibly one different storage per entity type, including some remote storage for some type of entities. Uh, and so that we, we move from per field storage into per entity type storage. Okay, so you'd still be able to do, you know, you've got five entity types and you store them in five different yeah. types of data stores. Yeah, and you could store some okay. of them in SQL, some of them in a read-only file, some of, some of them uh, query uh, Twitter or Flickr directly, some of them are stored in MongoDB, uh, etc. Okay, good. Hi, hey, quick question on um, the JCR283. Do you mean uh, PHP CR storage can be swapped with any storage that support uh, JCR283 like uh, Afrasco is, I think is uh, JCR283 compliant? So yeah, there are, there are a bunch of different implementations of JCR. Um, Jackrabbit is the reference implementation. There's another one called ModeShape and so on and so forth. However, and that's difference to CMS, um, JCR and PHP CR, they define an, an API that you can use inside your applications, but it does not specify a transport protocol. So it does not, um, so when, when we're talking to uh, the integration that we have uh, with Jackalope talking to Jackrabbit, that's using uh, um, uh, an open source yet, um, you know, proprietary in the sense that it was developed by the Jackrabbit guys API called Davex, which works over HTTP. So, uh, Alfresco does not implement that same API, so we can't just use, uh, we can't just put Alfresco behind Jackalope. We would have to do a little bit of work to expose that. Um, it, it's possible, but um, and maybe Seamus can actually help there, um, and you know we can we can uh, look into this these sort of things. Um, and yeah, since we kind of glossed over Seamus, I guess I'll explain a little bit about it. Like Seamus really. Um, to me is, is more like a, is a specification for the protocol, whereas JCR is an API that you, you use in your, inside your applications. One of the interesting things is that there's actually, there's a project called Apache Chemistry, which can basically, uh, uh, or was created for the JCR implementations to turn them, or it can basically take any JCR store and um, provide it, uh, this, or expose it as a CMS repository. And we could do something similar for, for PHPCR as well. And then maybe based on that, we can have some generic solution to be able to call into any PHPCR implementation or any JCR implementation. So things like that can happen, but they're probably not going to be like super performant. <laughs> and, uh, but there could be ways of like just saying, I just want to you know, get some of this data in there as well, right? You know, so you can you know, call into stuff uh, as needed. But you probably, in the end, like really your, your key data that you want to use all the time, uh, you probably want to have a little bit closer together. Uh. Hi there. Um, Adobe CQ5 really successfully uses the JCR repository backend. Have you guys looked into any other big CMSs that are successfully using it to see a model and how they scale the workspaces and other issues they're running into? Because I can for CS running into that similar issue, or many similar issues, because it's the same business problem we're solving, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we are, and we're actually very, um, especially, there are a couple uh, Java quantum minimum systems that are built on top of Jackrabbit. Uh, so Adobe uh, CRIX is one of them. Uh, Magnolia is another one. Hippo CMS is another one. Uh, the last two are open source. CRX obviously isn't. Um, and we're actually really closely talk, uh, talking to these people and also, I mean, we've pushed actually a couple of patches into Jackrabbit. Um, we're improving Jackrabbit as part of what we're doing, improving the HTTP interface, the Davix in interface. And uh, we're also talking about, you know, advancing Jackrabbit to have faceting support and things like that, which actually Hippo CMS, are, CMS already provides. And so it does also enable, in theory, you could, if, um, Drupal adopts PHP CR, you could have um, an installation that actually um, has CRX talking to Jackrabbit and, then, and Drupal talking to the same Jackrabbit instance. However, and that's again, that's something that Damien already mentioned, obviously you can, like the way that uh, CRX might, you know, store uh, translated content might be very different than how Drupal decides, so it, you know, it might not like work perfectly and there might be some work to do in there, but in theory it's sort of possible. 
Um, and of course also, um, and I think that touches also on, on your question a little bit, we can you look at how they're using Jackrabbit, how they are storing translated content and you know, learn from there. One of the resources I linked is um, uh, um, a blog post by David Nuschler, he's the lead of the JCR specification um, and also obviously works for Adobe, so he's active on CRX. And uh, the, the blog post is called David's Model, where he has like seven points where he talks about things that he learned as he was, you know, in his experience working with JCR in the real world. So there's a lot of experience that uh, Drupal could then also draw upon. Any other question? Uh, no big conceptual questions, just uh, how far along in development is this? Like, are there active you know, PHP examples like working that you, know, you can go out and download and get an example of and running? That's a question for you. <laughs> so um, the Symphony uh, 2 CMF project aims to have a first release this summer. There's already Sandbox, um, which actually already has inline editing that's way cooler than anything that Drupal has. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and some back editing capabilities and things like that. Um, so you, yeah, you can play with that. Uh, however, PHPCR really also works standalone. We have a tutorial that you, know, you can go through that's linked on uh, phpcr.github.com. Okay. Um, again, like the best implementation at the moment uses Jackrabbit. But um, you know, running Jackrabbit is really easy. You download a jar, you type Java dash jar name of jar, and Jackrabbit is running. Okay. So it's it's easy to get going with that. And uh, but actually, what we like we're we're finishing up some of the APIs at the moment. But the thing that we're most working on at the moment is the Doctrine database abstraction layer implementation. And uh, actually, just the other day, we finally managed to get our sandbox working with the database abstraction layer implementation. Mm -hmm. So. If you don't, if you you know insist on not using Java at all, you can also play around with the Docking Database Abstraction Layer implementation already. How far along is the MongoDB implementation? Um, very, 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 very rough. And uh, so the guy that worked on it, he did a lot last summer, and he was pretty much on par with the Database Abstraction Layer implementation. And then since then, he hasn't done much. Um, and uh, he he he's, he told me that he wants to work on it and uh, over spring again. Um, actually, many of, the, many of the things that we have to solve as part of the Doctrine database abstraction layer are things that actually also help uh, the MongoDB one. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but yeah, right now it's not something that we, we're, we're really pouring on our resources. We are more focused on the Doctrine database abstraction layer one. Okay, thank you. Um, you already mentioned uh, translation, and uh, I wonder whether uh, the PHP CR interfaces and the API uh, already handles uh, storing translated content in a way in such that uh, it's part of the interface? So that's actually one of these uh, things that, I, that really surprised me. So JCR does not cover internationalization, which I think is a, an oversight. I think it should be in there. Um, but they don't have it in there, and therefore PHPCR does not have it either. Um, I mentioned that there's this PHPCR ODM, uh, so like an ORM for PHPCR. And there we've integrated internationalization. So um, they're actually, it's a pluggable system so you can implement different strategies. We provide two strategies out of the box. One is basically, so um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to explain without showing a slide. So when you're mapping uh, out, like you have, you, uh, with PHP CRODM, you basically have plain PHP objects and then you can write um, mapping information, how, which fields should be stored and which type they are. And in that, when you're, when you're specifying this mapping, you can optionally also say, this is a translatable field, and this is a translatable field. And then you can pick a strategy, and based on the strategy, it will either um, store the, all the translated fields as a child node. So, so when you're storing uh, an object, you would you know, store it on the path X, and then for every locale, uh, that you've translated this node in, you will have a child, you know, slash en, slash fr, slash de, with all the fields that are translatable. Um, and the other option is you, that we've already implemented as well is that you can have, store them on the main node, and then just, like for example, if you have a field title, then it would be stored as title underscore en, title underscore fr. Now the cool thing with the PHP CRODM 
there's like a method find translation, for example. So you say, here's my path name and the locale, and then it will get that object populated all the properties for that locale. Now, you can manipulate that data and then say, bind translation en, and then when you persist that, then you're going to persist that as English. So it really, it's a really cool system to work with translations. However, obviously this, like this um, ODM approach really wants you to have fixed um, object, like PHP classes, which wouldn't work so well if you're say, like you want to give somebody an interface where you can say, these are you know, my, like my new node type and you know, these are the properties. You would have to generate a PHP class, which is I guess a no-no in Drupal land. Um, so maybe there, there could be a middle ground for, for, for doing, still doing something similar to that. But, so that's basically the strategy we have at the moment for the Symfony CMF project. We have these two different um, uh, strategies for st storing um, translations and you can really easily pick the one that works best for you and you could plug in uh, one that you prefer if you want to do something different. So in a nutshell, it's not that different than what we have right now in Drupal. Uh, and it's basically, the, you have the same problem in every type of document-oriented database which is that, yeah, you have different ways of nesting the language and dis deciding where you put the lo localization, uh, and there is different uh, best practices. Solar is the same issue, how do you handle translation and different multilingual content in Solar, et cetera. So there are stuff we could uh, get inspired with uh, in terms of API in the OD ODM project, but in terms of storage, uh, we are basically on our own. So we just need to pick our practice. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. There, there is a mandatory slide I have to show this thing. So, well, have fun.